Hello everyone, welcome to our session. I hope you're enjoying Learn Together so far. My name is Aicha Bash. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. In this session, my colleague George is joining me. Hi George, how are you doing? Very fine, Aisha. how are you doing? My name is uh, Juma George. I'm, I'm joining you from Nairobi. Um, I work as a program manager uh, in the Microsoft Graph team and I'm happy to be here, yeah. Yeah, so we're super excited for this session today. And we will talk about how you can bring your app where uh, all the users work every single day. So let's start with a real question. What are the apps we use every single day at work? So every day for me, I join the meetings, I chat with my colleagues, I uh, send emails. So I use all these apps in Microsoft 365. What about you, George? Which ones are your favorite? Uh, I find Teams really useful every day. I have to log into Teams for collaborations, but I also use uh, OneNote and, uh, and, and Outlook to just get uh, emails and things like that. Yeah, I guess Teams is really primary for me uh, for chatting with my colleagues, also joining in meetings. But I also love to use to-do lists, for example, just to keep my day-to-day -day tasks. Um, so probably all of them I'm using every single day. So in this session, uh, we're going to talk about how we can bring this data from Microsoft 365 into your apps. As we learned in the previous Learn Together event, uh, which was Learn Together Microsoft Graph, all these actions uh, while we're using Microsoft 365 products are actually creating data in Microsoft 365 Cloud. And we can get this data into our apps using Microsoft Graph API. If you must learn together Graph event, and if you are interested in deep diving into more in Microsoft Graph, you can check out aka.ms slash dev guide slash graph. So you will be directed to the related video. In the session specifically, we're going to talk about how we can track changes in Microsoft 365 Cloud. OK, so we're going to do a little bit role playing here, me and George. Let's say I am running a large company, and George is here to help me from Microsoft as a product manager. I will ask a couple of questions to him, and let's see how he can help me. In my company, we build our own collaboration app as um, we call it brainstorm app. Uh, as you see in the previous sessions, we already have Azure Cloud communications for video and chatting. We have Fluid Framework uh, for real-time brainstorming notes. Uh, we know that Microsoft Graph uh, provides us data from Microsoft 365 Cloud. So that's why we also use Microsoft Graph Toolkit in our app to get user profile. We embedded a login feature using Graph Toolkit, and we get people's information, again, using Graph Toolkit components and the leverage from providers for the authentication too. We want to implement one more thing into our brainstorming app. Um, so uh, while we're using collaborating, uh, while we're collaborating in the brainstorm app, if one of our colleagues become uh, available, we want to receive a notification, real-time notification, about that person's present status. So George, how can we track changes real-time in Microsoft 365 data? Is it possible to do that? Yes, it's very possible. So uh, basically we use the uh, Microsoft Graph Change Tracking uh, service that we run here in Microsoft, uh, sometimes called the webhooks. So the, what this mechanism does is that it helps you get not notified whenever there's any change that happens in any of the Microsoft M365 uh, services. Like for instance, if you receive an email, then you, you get to, to, to get a notification that you have actually received an email. So yeah, that's how you can get uh, real-time notifications from uh, Microsoft Graph. Okay, that sounds interesting and exciting. Why we use change notifications? So we use change notifications for various reasons. One of them is if you wanted to refresh maybe uh, your application or just kickstart any custom logic that would want after you get a notification, then you can actually take uh, advantage of change notifications. 
Okay, this sounds amazing. Um, but I have one more question. And uh, now what I understood is Microsoft Graph actually uses a webhook mechanism as a change notification. But we have thousands of employees working in my company and we want to track all of their change, uh, pr present changes. So uh, when we track all of their changes, which is a huge number of notifications, can Webhook handle this? Is there any better way to do that? How can we track changes uh, without getting any issues? Great question. So Webhooks uh, can handle uh, various loads, but not uh, high throughput scenarios where you have uh, so many uh, notifications coming through, especially in the scenario you've painted around your own organization. So the idea here is that uh, since uh, Microsoft Graph chain notifications can actually deliver notifications in real time through Azure event hubs, then you can actually get uh, take, take advantage of the event hubs and fetch the notifications from the event hub. It's, it, it will help with the, with high throughput scenarios. Hmm. Interesting. So what is Event Hubs? Uh, why should we use Azure Event Hubs? Event Hubs, basically, if I can uh, explain it uh, shortly, this is uh, a streaming service that streams events in real time. So it's built for specific uh, scenarios where you have heavy traffic of uh, notifications or any events that you are remitting. And also when you want to you have a big organization like yourself, then this this would really would really work for you. Okay, so what kind of scenarios are the best for uh, change notifications and event hub feature? So when you have large data sets, uh, when you have a large uh, pool of resources that you want to get notified, uh, then this is one of the this is the best uh, uh, the best um, approach. So you you can take advantage of the event hubs on that. Also, when you have a high frequency of notifications, so maybe you are receiving notifications every milliseconds or something like that, then probably this is the best option for you. And also, when you have a very huge organization that has multi tenants and applications that, that, that cut across several services and you want to still get notified whenever there's a change, then this is also, this is a, a great way to go about uh, receiving notifications. Awesome, this definitely works for us. So how can we get started? Well, uh, yes, you can get started uh, in two steps, two main steps, basically. The first step is uh, you will need to create an Azure Event Hub. So once you create an Azure Event Hub, you need to take note of the event hub connection string because you'll use it later and I'll explain why. The second step is you will need to create an Azure Key Vault. So the Azure Key Vault kind of just secures your connection string. So you will get the connection string from the Azure event hubs and load that connection string to the Azure Key Vault. Then you will use the Azure Key Vault as, the, as, as, the, as your new um, notification URL where you'll be able to receive notifications. Okay, that's awesome. So can you quickly walk us through how we can set up all these you mentioned? Sure. Uh, the first step, as I mentioned earlier, is you will have to create an event hub, an Azure event hub. So once you create an Azure event hub, the next step is just create the key vault. You get the event hub connection string and load it to, to the key vault. Once you do that, the next step is just create a subscription to the specific resource you want to listen to. So for instance, if you wanted to listen to Teams conversation, for instance, you will create a subscription uh, using the URL that is on this uh, presentation that we have down there. So that is will act as your notification URL in your subscription payload. And then with that, you're able to create a subscription after that. Every notification, anytime there's a change in uh, the resource you've subscribed for, you will be able to get notifications through the event hubs all the way to your app. And then you can consume the, the notification uh, however you like. Awesome. So uh, that sounds easy. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Aisha, I have a question for you. Uh, yeah, Aisha, can you? 
Can, can you show us how we can use change notifications through event hubs in the brainstorm app that you mentioned to us earlier? Yes, so now let's assume that we learned everything from George, how we can set up uh, Microsoft Graph Change notifications with Azure Event Hubs. Next step for us is getting Microsoft Graph Presence API change notifications delivered real time in Brainstorm app. Now I'm going to walk you through how you're going to do that uh, in Brainstorm app, and then I will just walk you through the demo and show you how we did it. So. As you know, we have Microsoft Graph Presence API change notifications. Uh, we will use Microsoft Graph change tracking. And we already set up a key world and event hub. As George mentioned, we follow his way. Now we are getting event hub connection string from the key world, which is uh, saved there securely. And then we are using Power Automate Flow to create subscription. To do that, we first need to uh, use Azure Active Directory to authenticate our flow, and then Power Automate will flow. Uh, Power Automate Flow will create subscription for us uh, every single hour. And whenever there's a change happening in the present status of any employee, then we are going to uh, receive these changes in the event hubs. Next step for us is handling the function apps to deliver the data real time in our brainstorm app so that we will set up event hub messages as an input in our function app. And we will set up signal R as an output. Here, we are trying to create a server for us to deliver data real time. As you saw in the previous session, in the Fluent, uh, Fluent framework, uh, it does everything for us, and we don't need to do we don't need to create any server. Um, so you can only use a Fluent framework straightforward. For us, since we're creating a custom uh, data delivery mechanism in real time, we will need a, a server in the background. So we leverage from server R here, a signal R here. So once we set up signal R as an output, uh, our final step is just getting data real time through our React app. Um, and the data will be broadcasted through um, our app real time without any need once we do all this setup. Yeah, so that's about it. Hey, sounds great, uh, Aicha. Uh, so, can you show us how it works in uh, in a in a in, in a demo? Yeah, sure. Okay, so let's do the demo. Um, now we are in uh, Azure portal. I already created uh, event hubs and key world. Let me quickly go to event hubs to show you how it looks like here. Um, you can create multiple event hubs if needed, and you can see how many, what kind of data coming through here. I will go to event hubs and show you our event hub for presence. This is the event hub you're using, and this data is coming through. Uh, we can see the changes in this graphic. We can copy the connection string from this event hub, and then we will use key world to store our connection strings securely. First of all, we will need Vault URI to create notification. Uh, and then we will need secret name again for the notification URL. Um, and after that, we will be able to connect our um, connection string to a, a event hubs straightforward. So as you know, we are using Power Automate Flow to create our subscription. That's why I created a flow for us already. Let me quickly walk you through how this flow works. This is basically only for subscription. Let me edit that and show you. This flow recurs every hour, basically. And we are tracking changes for a group of people on Teams. We are tracking changes for a team on Microsoft Teams. And we are getting their uh, IDs as a type of array. And final step is just creating subscription. I created a custom connector here in uh, Power Automate Flow to do that. And here we are just doing a post to subscription at the top of the hour. Um, so we are tracking updated changes. Notification URL is exactly the same what George showed us. I copied Vault URL and pasted it here. I also pasted the secret name. And final step is the tenant ID. 
our resources, communication, uh, presences, and our array of user IDs. And finally, we have expression date is in one hour later. And this flow works every hour. It's actually even working right now. So let's go ahead and test if our event hub uh, subscription works. I will change Ellen's status. Let's say do not disturb. Let's go to event hub and see if there's any changes. Okay, let me click here and yeah, so now we saw the changes and it's literally real time. I just changed that uh, the status of Ellen and I turned back to Azure portal and now we changed it. We see the spike in the uh, graphic. So this is awesome. It definitely works. Works great. Uh, uh, so how uh, so far we've seen how to create a subscription and how to receive notifications uh, onto the event hubs. Uh, do you mind showing us how you receive the notifications from the event hub to to your Rea to to the React app that you showed us earlier? Yes. Yeah, so here comes the tricky part: our code. Let me walk you through how we did the setup in our functions and as well as our uh, brainstorm app. Okay, so this is our app and here are functions. In the negotiate function, we basically handle the authentication of the signal R. Basically, we, we do the negotiate uh, with signal R connection. Our output is signal R connection info. And in the index, you will see we only keep the connection info. That means negotiate only handles the signal R connection with Azure functions. So the second step, which is the place we do everything else in the broadcast, we keep input as event hub messages that means input will be all the messages coming through event hub and output is going to be uh signal r messages so whatever we get from event hub we will send it directly to signal r and let's go to index.js and show you how we did that here we keep all the event hub messages we basically get everything from event hub as a message and at the bottom we send all the data coming through to signal R as a signal R message. So um, instead of sending all of the JSON file, I refined uh, our data a little bit because we don't need everything coming through in the change notifications. In our case, we only need ID and the availability of the person so that we can create notification in our app and basically uh, show the user's profile using the ID and show the availability, the status of the person. So that's about it. That's very interesting, Aita. Uh, you showed us how the notifications are refined and how you get the, avail the, the availability and ID. Do you mind showing us how you connect these functions to SignalR? Yes, exactly. That's a great point. Um, I created Signal R on Azure too. Let's quickly go to our resource group on Azure. And this is our Signal R. Here in the Signal R, you can get the connection string uh, and you can copy. If you're using Signal R, if you're basically using your functions locally, you have to create local settings JSON file. So you will keep your Signal R and the event hubs connection string in this file. If you are setting up your function apps on Azure, then uh, you can handle the connection between Signal R and the event hubs directly on the portal. You don't have to create any uh, local file. So the next step for us is just doing the connection, uh, basically creating connection in our app to Signal R. It, when you go to the uh, brainstorm app, you will see we have signal R connection TSX file, and here is our signal R connection function. Uh, we have API based URL, which is our notification function uh, URL, and we do the connection directly in here. We we get the message from Azure Functions, and then we send it here as a notification. And we basically send the data as a toast notification in our React app. So here's the toast container we are using. Let me show you our brainstorm app. Okay, so here's our brainstorm app. 
Uh, I logged in here as Aicha and George and I are here hanging out, working on our brainstorming. Uh, we are doing some projects, working on some projects with the notes and so on. Uh, but we want Ellen to join us too, so we don't know if he's available or not. Let's go ahead and change Ellen's status and make it available. Okay. So while we're working in the brainstorm map, wow, we get a notification uh, in the brainstorm map showing that Ellen becomes available. That's awesome. So we want him to join us too. Uh, so I will invite him. When we click invite, Ellen will receive a message from me saying, um, come join us, collaborate with us. And Ellen will receive a URL once he pastes this URL uh, in the browser, he will be directed to brainstorm app and then he can log in. And um, once he logs in, he can basically join us in the discussions. That, that means in our team, uh, whoever is available, we will get a notification and we, will in, we, will in, we can basically invite him using the notification box. And there we go. Three of us are hanging out and doing the brainstorming and working here. What happens when, let's say, any of us becomes uh, away or we get offline or we lost our connection and so on? We definitely want to get, uh, we definitely want to be informed about our teammates, our colleagues uh, in the brainstorm session if they get offline or if they they change their status. So, oh, now I see George became. Um, the George basically changed the status, so he became be right back. So in this case, uh, I guess it is really great to see um, the logged in user status too, if it has changed and became different than available. Very interesting, Aita. Uh, I have another question for you. How, how do you get, do you do get to send the notifications with user profiles? Do you make graph calls for that? Yes, exactly. So let's quickly go back to uh, our code and let me show you the graph notifications file. Here we basically have notification function. We get all the data from uh, signal R and we do a quick check if the user status is available. Um, and we basically get only available status. And also if the user is different than the logged in users, um, then we basically use Microsoft Graph Toolkit uh, person component to send the user profile card. We also have a button here which calls Microsoft Graph Teams API to send a chat message to the user to invite that person, basically. And finally, we send the toast notification for uh, the steps we, we like to. And the second part is if logged in user gets offline or change the status, then we also send a person card to show their um, status as the status has changed. Okay, so that's about it. This is all about uh, Microsoft 365 part of the brainstorm app. That's really great. That's how, that's mostly how our customers currently use, uh, consume the graph chain notifications. That's a, a, a real life end to end scenario. Thank you for that, Taita. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, that's all about our session. If you would like to try out a uh, brainstorm app uh, in the real time notifications in the brainstorm app, you can check out the GitHub repository in aka.ms slash GitHub repo slash brainstorm app. And uh, make sure to go to Enter 65 branch to see all these features with SignalR, Event Hub, and the change notifications. So that's all from us, folks. I hope you enjoyed our session. Thank you for joining. Bye. Bye.